at a transition committee meeting this morning, not a scheduled meeting, but it was called because um, we've been keeping a very close eye on the on the situation in Queensland. And as you as as you may have, have seen yourself, I've seen some very encouraging signs there. So um, to summarise, um, they've through their excellent contact tracing, they've been able to establish where every single one of their cases. Um, had caught their infection from. And as you'll also be aware, the rates of testing are very high indeed. So as a consequence, we, we, feel, we feel confident in the, uh, in the position of, of, of Brisbane uh, and, and associated counties. So we're, we're going to lift the border restriction as of today. So what that means in practice then is that where we currently have, have Brisbane as a, um, as, as a level six in terms of the direction, which effectively bars entry into the state, we're shifted to a level three. So what that means is that those people who previously couldn't enter South Australia now can, but they will need to get tested on day one, day five, and day 13. The other important things are that they are not allowed to enter high-risk health sites um, and are not allowed to enter sort of venues where there is a, a COVID management plan in place. Um, now, there will be a small number of people who have been to exposure sites um, in Queensland. Now, they're not allowed out of quarantine. We have those names and we are, we are going to be making contact with them um, to advise specifically as to, as to what their, their risk is. But in broad, if you've been to an exposure site which is, which is listed on the Queensland website and is obviously changing the whole while, um, then you won't be able to come out of quarantine until you've completed your 14 days. Um, I think that's uh, that's 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 probably a fair summary of um, of where we are in terms of the in terms of the direction. But I'd certainly be happy to take any questions or provide any clarifications that you may see. Immediately. Yes, immediately. And what does that mean that if someone has come from Brisbane, isn't in, in one of those high risk locations, are they now allowed out of quarantine, or do they have to finish their fourteen days? No, they're, they're allowed out of quarantine as of now. Uh, the important thing, I think, for for those people though, is that they do need to finish their testing. So we would really strongly request that they have their day one test if they haven't already had it, that they have their day five test and their day thirteen test. Those things are key. And I think another important point to make is that if a person Having had their test, nonetheless has symptoms outside of those periods, um, then they do need to get tested again and they need to isolate if they have symptoms until they've had a negative result. Why today? What's changed in the last 48 hours since Brisbane lifted its lockdown? Well, um, I think Professor Sparrow has been in daily contact with, with her colleagues interstate and um, has been really keeping a very close eye on, the, uh, on, on progress there. As I said, epidemiologically, um, they're able to track every single person who has had infection and as was the case today, the person who was identified as positive today was already in quarantine. So they're very kind of safe and secure from that sense and at the same time their testing rates have been very high. So we feel it's a, a good degree of comfort and rather than wait until a transition committee meeting on Tuesday, we felt that particularly given it's the Easter weekend that if there is an opportunity to lift the border earlier and not keep these restrictions in place a moment longer than they need to be, that was the reason it, it was lifted today. Who called the transition committee? My understanding is that it, it was Professor Spurrier, but I think she asked colleagues if they could meet today, following a conversation with her counterpart in Queensland a, a bit earlier this morning. There's what, been a, sorry. I was going to say, what about Byron Bay? Does it include that? No, so Byron Bay stays at a level three still, um, but obviously Queensland now, or Brisbane, is now shifting to a level three as well because we perceive a, a sort of an equivalent level of risk in both locations. There's been a lot of criticism, there's been some criticism of confusing rules, Doc, and the mixed messages that you're giving to travellers. Were you in transition committee firstly this morning, secondly, what's SA Health's response to that? Um, the best of my recollection that that wasn't, that wasn't discussed in the, the mixed messaging, as, as, as you've described, it was not discussed in the transition committee this morning, and, as, and from my perspective, I don't see that as a driver for the change made today. Um, I am aware that SA Health has made statements and has provided an apology for any confusion and any kind of upset caused to people that had been given wrong information or, or conflicting information. I mean, I can only sort of reiterate the apology that has been provided, but um, I don't really have a further update thereafter. Um, and can I just clarify, I guess, what, what was specifically driving these the border being lifted today as opposed to 
two days ago. Well, I think as I've said, Andrew, um, there's been really close following of the of the approach at the border. Uh, sorry, of the approach in Brisbane, where the cases are, the epidemiological links and the genomic links as well. And on the basis of these and the conversations which Professor Spurrier has had with her counterparts in Queensland, um, she is confident and provided strong recommendation that it was appropriate to, to look at lifting the border earlier than we might have anticipated, which would the next regularised opportunity would have been on Tuesday coming. So that, as far as I'm aware, is the, is, is the basis that this decision has been made on the basis of the evidence. So essentially you're, you're pretty confident that Greater Brisbane has got this outbreak under control? That's exactly right. That's the very strong message that, that we've had um, from, from, from Professor Spurrier's, um, from her colleagues in the state. And again, on the AHPPC meeting this morning, that, that was again a further point which, which, was, which was made by Queensland, that, that they have contact traced through, they have tracked each of the each of the infected persons, and as I say, the last person to, to have turned positive, as it were, was already in, in isolation. So I think that kind of speaks well for the for the depth of contact tracing which they've been able to do. Um, do, do you have any new cases in Queensland or here? Do you have any? Well, as I say, I believe there was one further new case today, and that person was already in quarantine. In terms of uh, new cases here, there were no new cases today. Clearly, all of our cases have been in hotel quarantine as interstate travellers. I suppose the one update I can provide in respect to that is that um, one person was taken from Tom's Court to the, the Royal Adelaide Hospital this morning because they, they were unwell and are currently being assessed there. This is a male in their 40s uh, and we believe has the South African variant. How serious is that situation? Um, I think, as I say, they're, they're still being assessed there. Clearly, if someone is deemed unwell enough that, that, they, that they have to go to hospital, we, we, have, we have concerns for their welfare, but obviously they are in the right place. Um, what um, symptoms does this, what, do you have any information on the types of systems that they showed in order to trigger mm. and guide I don't have a great them? deal of information because, as I say, that assessment is happening as we speak, but we're clearly very keen to share information as it becomes available. To the best of my understanding, they are they're, they're breathless. Now, whether they're sufficiently short of breath or their lungs are sufficiently impaired that they will need to remain in hospital is, is still to be determined by the emergency department at the Royal Adelaide. Do you know how long they've been in Tom's Court for? I don't have that now, sorry. Um, and can you just... Um, uh, do you know any details, Doc, about um, compensation or any form of reimbursement for the travellers after what's happened in the past week? In terms of, uh, in terms of mixed messaging, um, the, as I understand it, um, each, person would, each person who has a claim on that would, would be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. So I would certainly encourage people that if they feel that they've been left out of pocket or disadvantaged in some way, they should contact SA Health and we would obviously seek further details from them and make a determination. Can we speak to the Acting Commissioner, please? Of course. Um, Acting Commissioner, do you have any, um, uh, can you provide us any insight into the discussions of the Transition Committee this morning and the advice that you were given to authorise the borders being lifted? Sure. So the focus was on the health advice that was provided to Professor Spurrier, which gave her confidence that all the um, outstanding cases had been linked in terms of the original source and their serology. Um, so that last piece of the jigsaw puzzle was closed off, um, plus the other level of confidence that was provided from uh, the professor was that Queenslander doing about 20,000 COVID tests per day. So that level of testing in the community also provided a second level of confidence. Hey, what's your response to criticisms that this probably could have been made a couple of, or potentially could have been made a couple of days ago and that you were a bit slow in lifting these restrictions? It's wrong. It couldn't have been made a couple of days ago because the... Um, the clinical uh, results had not been made available for Professor Spurry about this last outstanding case. And that was that was the concern about um, how that person became infected. Was it a community transmission with an unknown source or was it in fact a known source? Once that had been clarified, then the decision could be made, which so, was different from what we knew a couple of days ago. So you were entirely comfortable in the, the, the decisions of the transition committee over the past few days? Yes. And just to be clear, so people getting off the plane from Brisbane tonight, what are the requirements for them? So they'll be, um, they'll be assessed. Um, the level three restrictions are the ones that would generally apply to those people. Um, they'll be greeted, they'll be um, they'll work through the issues of where they've come from. And obviously if they've been in that greater Brisbane area, have they been to any of the sites that are currently listed on the Queensland website and um, within the time periods? 
Um, those people might be um, subject to some other restriction if they do fit that criteria. But by and large, most people travelling in from broader Queensland um, can come in. Um, they don't have to be a return South Australian. And it's the level three restrictions for day one, uh, three, day, the three tests that they have to be done over 14 days. Just on another topic, uh, despite all the police campaigning for road safety, there's been another fatal crash at uh, Hillier today. What's your reaction to that? Look, it's a, it's a very sad circumstance, but it's a, just a glaring example of what's happening on our roads. We've also released some stats today about two people that were uh, caught speeding on our roads, significantly high speeds. Um, it's deeply concerning um, that people are putting their lives at risk and obviously another lives lost. It, it's just terrible. There's a family out there who are in mourning. We've yet to understand what the cause of that crash was and there's an ongoing investigation. But it just goes to show people have to be careful on our roads because we are losing too many people. Do you have any details on the crash? It's just a single vehicle that ran off the road, wasn't it? Yeah, my understanding is it's a single vehicle that's come off the road. At the time that the accident, the time the accident happened may not be the time the car was found, so that has to be pieced together by a major crash. There'll be an ongoing inquiry in regards to what the possible cause could be, whether it was speed or inattention. Yet to be determined whether alcohol or drugs were a factor, but that would be subject of the investigation. Okay, and there's also been a tragic uh, incident down at, um, in Canada Bay. Do you know any details on what happened with that? And I understand that a, a person had been scuba diving. He's come off the beach, and as he's come off the beach, he's suffered a medical episode. Um, and uh, sadly, his life couldn't be saved. Um, I understand he's a 57-year-old man, but I don't know anything about that. I don't know where he's gone. Just those speed drivers you mentioned, or riders, um, what would you have to say about their behaviour? Well, I think our campaign speaks for itself. I think people have to stop being selfish, and they've got to think of themselves, they've got to think of other road users. Um, you know, speeding at, um, at, you know, what is it, about 70% uh, over the posted limit. I mean, there's just no excuse for that, not at all. Um, there's speed signs are there on roads. Um, they're not, you know, an invitation to, if you like to do this speed, we encourage you to do it. It is the maximum speed that you should be doing on that road. And if you're 70% above that, you are seriously putting everyone in danger, not, like, not just yourself. You are really selfish. Should there be double the merit points for you know, some of these extreme cases? Or well, I've yet to see evidence that double the merit points where they are in place actually have an effect. But look, it's something I'm sure that the government um, would consider from time to time. Um, but at the moment, it doesn't, it doesn't appear to, that with some of these people, anything you do is going to stop them. So that's the concern that we have. What is it going to take? Firstly, it should take, their, it should take themselves. And then it should take the people around them to remind them uh, not to be idiots on the road. But ultimately, this comes down to the individual making absolutely terrible decisions and just being selfish. Um, uh, Commissioner, Acting Commissioner, can I just um, uh, go back to COVID for one minute? Yes. We've got the borders now lifting. We've got unprecedented levels of easing of restrictions. What's your message to the community about um, what they should be doing over the next coming days? I think it's a good question. But, um, the reality is we shouldn't become complacent. Um, we only have to remember about, about 12 months ago, we actually lost four people in South Australia uh, due to COVID. We've lost three million people worldwide. It is a real problem. We are really lucky where we've, where we've arrived at in South Australia with all the, uh, the buy-in from the community doing the right thing. Now's not the time to stop doing the right thing. Use the QR codes. Um, think, think about obeying, you must obey the rules that are in place, but also just think about hand sanitising. Think about social distancing. Make really good decisions about how you protect yourself and you protect others because COVID is real. You would only have to speak to any of the family of the four South Australians that we lost nearly 12 months ago to know the real pain that can come from this. Thank you. Um, Doc, can we just ask, sorry, one final question. Sure. Um, there's been some concerns and some uh, urgent investigations into a patient in Melbourne who appears to have had some blood clots from taking the AstraZeneca vaccination. Have you had an up, as I say, Health had an update from the... TGA and can you provide any further information about? So um, we, we we have indeed. So SA Health obviously is, is part of the AHPPC and and those meetings happen on a on a regular basis. Clearly, with the concerns regarding the case in Melbourne, there's been a there's been a series of meetings. Um, the HPPC is, um, has been working closely with the TGA and ATAGI uh, in relation to. Um, firstly, trying to understand better what, what, what occurred with the person who's become seriously unwell in Melbourne, and in addition, is there a relationship between that and the vaccination? Likewise, um, both bodies, Atagi and um, 
and the TGA have been working very closely with the counterparts overseas, so particularly in the UK and in Europe, where obviously they've got fairly extensive experience of the, of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Information is still becoming available. Uh, and so we're not able to give a firm position as to whether whether um, whether the vaccine was truly implicated or if there was a you know what, what is the relationship between the vaccination and the person becoming unwell. But clearly we are we are concerned in respect to um, how people should should respond to this information. Um, the the TGA and Atagi and, and the Commonwealth in general have written to all general practitioners. And if you go to the Atagi website, you'll find information both for sort of clinicians who are giving vaccination, but also for, for people in the community. Because I think the, the key responsibility for health in this, in, in this is to ensure that our communities and the people who will, who will be having the vaccination are as best informed as possible so that they can make a decision, is the vaccine right for them or do they have any particular risk factors which might mean that they, they need to kind of give extra thought to that. But as I say, it's still slightly early days and this information is still becoming available. Um, over the course of the weekend, these, these meetings will continue into next week and I would anticipate that early in the coming week we'll, we'll, we'll know a fair bit more about the case and what the Australian position is. So are you still giving out AstraZeneca vaccines to people? Well that's right, so the AstraZeneca vaccine is approved in Australia and is still being vaccinated in Australia. I think it's important as well that you put alongside AstraZeneca or, 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 or vaccine risk and, and consider the impact of the disease itself. As the Commissioner just said, globally there's been millions of people who have died as a result of COVID and many more people have um, succumbed to long COVID or long-term symptoms after a COVID infection. So I think we need to be really clear, while there may be a risk with the vaccine, and that has yet to be determined, the, the, the risk of COVID is real and we need to protect ourselves against that. And just quickly, I'm assuming the low number of vaccines administered here yesterday was because of Good Friday? I think that's absolutely right. I think if you if you track daily the the number of vaccines, which in South Australia they do show sort of a bit of drop over weekends, and obviously on a public holiday, you would expect that that drop would be further still. Okay, thank you. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you.